What is up everybody, we are back today and we're going to talk a little bit about the art of full-time RVing with kids and pets. So stay tuned. So welcome back to the channel everybody. So we have a lot planned for this episode. We're going to do some talking about what we're doing and why we're doing this update. Um, I know we have not been posting a lot about the renovations. We have been working religiously on that. Um, I am going to be feeding the camera more as we go through this. But I wanted to kind of give you guys an update as far as some of the stuff we're doing. So basically we have the TV cabinet all somewhat prepped up. I still got the top part. I got to stain. Um, get that all done. And then I got the back piece. I still need to get cut. And then basically that will get all stained up. TV to lift up that'll pretty much be all done we do have the fireplace but we don't have it installed yet we are going to get that installed hopefully hoping in the next week or so um, but this episode is very special to me because we're going to talk about the art of RV full-time RV living because the reason for this imagine you guys start the RV life and you guys start doing all this and you have your, your nine to five job that like us so we still have our nine to, nine to five job you guys are still going to doing that but how do you guys balance your work and family life so that's what we're going to talk about so imagine the, a full-time rv living where you can basically go do whatever you want whenever you want but you're still tied to the nine to five you still have to make time for that because that pays the bills honestly you can't do this you can't go live full-time in an rv without having some sort of income most youtubers and social media influencers um, like me do this kind of stuff and they find different niches to be able to produce and be able to pay the bills to be able to go explore and be honest in order to do that you need you need the money so for us we still have our nine to five jobs that's why the content uh, it does not get posted out as much we are working to try to find a more regular schedule on that and as we start working towards some of the things and start dialing some of the show in um, we want to have a daily I'm sorry a weekly time that we're going to actually post all this stuff out so let's talk a little bit about that um i have some notes here um that's kind of why we're doing this because this is going to be a podcast and then we're actually doing a video podcast as well for the channel so you know let's talk about that so what is the best way to start your full-time rv living with kids and pets you know you, the first thing you need to do is you need to find what type of rig you're going to be in what type of RV is going to be best for you? There's all sorts of variances out there. We have, we have a Monaco Class A that we decided to go with. Um, but you guys might find a, a fifth wheel might be better for you guys. Or how about a pull behind bumper trailer that's just a little bit smaller because it's just you. You're single. You want to go do your own thing. Um, so there's all sorts of opportunities to find different things. Um, some people, they want to be able to go with the Class B Sprinter vans and that's just because they're one person or if they're a couple they want to do that too you know we've met all sorts of people out there when we did the the expo last year for overlanding uh, we met all sorts of great people in the sprinter vans doing the 4x4 scene and you know they're 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 rocking it out doing that cool thing um, there's all sorts of class C motorhomes class A motorhomes um, there's custom trailers off-roading trailers it all depends on what fits your budget and what fits your needs as far as what you guys want to do when you start full-time living. Um, when we first started looking at this, it started really evaluating that we wanted to see what we wanted to have. We started with looking at fifth wheels. We're not going to lie. I liked them, um, but I was kind of torn because you get a fifth wheel, and for us, we found the positive and the negative in both of those because... Yes, it's got more room for what we want to. The ones we were looking at had a, a bedroom in the front, bedroom in the back because there was a toy hauler. But then we had the living room, kitchen area in the front. Um, but then you run into a problem where if you're traveling, what happens with that? Well, you have to stop. If Some of them you have to open up the slide to be even get into the into the rig. If you have to use the bathroom, cook, make, make a meal, whatever. Um, so that, that was kind of a deciding factor for us. Uh, when we started looking into this, we had an old MCI. If you guys haven't heard about that, we've had an, we had an old converted MCI Greyhound bus that was, that was converted out to an RV. Um, did a uh, South Dakota trip where we went out to the uh, Black Mountains out there and went to Sturgis. Had a, had a great time, you know. That was the deciding factor. We liked the fact that you could pretty much drive. We had accessibility to our fridge, some food, some snacks. 
um, and then bathroom for the kids because we all know if you have kids and you're traveling you're gonna have that now one of the equations that we didn't take into fact in, into account back then was we didn't have pets with us when we went on vacation so that adds a whole nother factor to you guys so we'll talk a little bit more about the pets later on but you know first familiarize yourself with what type of rig you guys want to use you know like I, I think that's the big biggest the key thing is find something that's gonna fit your budget and fit your needs so that's the first thing that you're gonna to want to focus on so next thing you need to find a, a productive work schedule with what's gonna work for you so most people if they're doing the nine to five um, you have one of two options you're gonna to have to go into into your work every single day um, which we do or you're going to have the capability of doing a 9 to 5. Or I'm sorry. Uh, you're going to have to go into work every single day or you're going to have to work remote. And that's basically you're going to have to be able to find find an area inside your RV to make the commitment if you're doing remote work. So if you're if you're traveling, you're you're working remote, whether you're doing IT, nursing, whatever, um, there's all sorts of different niches as far as remote work now. Um, but you're definitely going to want to have an area to have your little home office built out into there which then leads into the quality of your work what kind of internet are you using are you gonna have internet in some of the areas you're traveling to that you want to go explore you get out to the Grand Canyon and, and Yellowstone and some of the other places out west you're gonna have scarce internet um, even with Starlink you know honestly a lot of people love Starlink I like it it works but it's not what everybody thinks it is the more people that go and jump on Starlink the slower it's going to get, the more congested it's going to get. It's just basic IT stuff, basic how it works. Um, the more you throw on it, the slower it's going to get. Until they make it a little bit more robust system that, that can handle more on the infrastructure and the networking side, that's just how it is. So what kind of internet are you guys going to be using? You guys really need to think about that. And then think about um, if you're going to be doing boondocking and off-grid uh, uh, working, how are you going to power some of your devices so that you can work remote? These are all different things that you want, really want to think about. So you need to think about your work schedule, first off. Um, during the day, if you're working remote, what are those hours going to look like? When are you going to be working? And kind of set up a nice routine for that. Next thing, um, if you're going in, of course, you're going to have a routine already. You're going to have, like for us, we leave about 6.15 in the morning, and then we get home about 5 o'clock. So that's for us. Um, but then at the same time, we have this great park that we come back to. Um, I like it here. It's quiet, secluded, um, great for the kids because they get to spend, spend the day here. They get to hang out. Our kids are old enough. They get to go swimming and do all sorts of different things, which is really cool. So um, making a flexible work sp schedule, too, is also important, too, because you, you want to have family time to them. You don't want to be just working and just not be able to still enjoy this lifestyle. The purpose of you jumping into this lifestyle is so that you can actually go and enjoy some of the stuff that you're doing. You know, if you want to be able to take some time off, work with your job as far as if you have paid time off or if you want to be able to take uh, work part time with them, whatever, make sure you guys are taking the opportunities to also embrace this lifestyle and go travel. Like for us, we're not going to just stay in this spot. This is right now just for kind of a stopping stone where we're kind of staying for right now. We might change a different RV park down the road where we find something closer, something nicer that we might find that suits us a little bit better. But um we're not that far from Biloxi. We went there once and it was actually pretty nice, so we want to go there again. We're not that far from New Orleans. We want to go check that out. There's all sorts of the there's all sorts of coastal cities that we want to go check out. Um, and that's on our bucket list for this year to try to go and try to visit some of those areas and get out and just go explore. Um, and those all can be within two to three hundred miles where we just do a weekend trip just to get away we have the rig take our home with us it's our home on wheels and we can just go have some fun so create a flexible work work schedule that suits you guys so that you guys can still pay the bills still do your responsibilities and still go have fun with your family and whatnot so yeah so how are you going to educate your kids when you guys get on the road? So there's all sorts of different options now. COVID changed everything with video conferencing, remote. We had that stuff all before, but COVID really enhanced it as far as dialing in and getting people more engaged with video conferencing and YouTube and everything else. And I think that's a great thing, but it's also a bad thing too, because then you lose out on 
the ability on one of the things that I think is really important is schooling and your kids meeting people and interacting and having that connection with other kids. So if you go full time on the road, you can go and have homeschooling. Um, and I think that's a really good thing, but the biggest obstacle to that is you're not going to have your kids aren't going to have any type of friends long term if you start moving around a lot if that makes sense one of the things that you really can do for them is like for us and i've seen it with other youtubers and other full timers out there is take and allow your kids to stay in a couple areas you know the 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 rule of staying three weeks at a park or uh, at a location Try to find areas your kids can kind of make some friends with. So you still want them to be able to interact. You still want them to be able to do stuff, but you still want them to have a good education. Um, for us, they're going to be going to the local schools here. Uh, we have two of them that are still in school. Once they get finished up, then we, we plan on trying to maybe do some traveling and doing some other stuff after that. But I think it's very important that you have to take into account when you think about the schooling to think about the social aspect of getting your kids out there so that they still interact with people and they still grow those social skills that you need to do so homeschooling is a really good opportunity because then you can learn at your own pace um, as far as your kids they can learn um, but then you can also teach at your own pace if you're traveling um, and then you can use some of the places you're traveling to as a schooling event as far as being able to go take them to like the Grand Canyon and different historical sites throughout the United States that traditionally you wouldn't ever be able to take some of the kids go into a traditional school. So I think that's also a great opportunity to be able to get, like visit Yellowstone and some of the other places out there. So um, make sure you guys utilize that kind of stuff and then utilize online learning platforms too. Even if they are going to school here like, like how we have our kids, we're going to be utilizing some other applications out there online to help their learning as far as uh, reading, writing, all that kind of stuff. I think technology has got a got an opportunity to allow us to reboot some things and re-help our kids learn a little bit better. Schools have taken out cursive writing. I want the kids to learn a little bit more about that and actually get pretty proficient so they can sign their name and actually do, do some of the things they really should have. But um, some educational programs don't allow that anymore. They actually slap the kids' hands when they go in... Uh, um, not physically slap them, but you know what I mean. It, it's it's not an accepted practice for them anymore. So I want them to kind of learn a little bit about that. And I feel like utilizing some applications like that where they can actually do other stuff, where they can do extracurricular activities on the side, not just sports and other stuff, but they can also do learning applications so they can kind of better their skills as far as what they can learn in life and it'll carry on to them in their future as, as they grow up. Um, as far as some of this other stuff, you know, when you guys go to visit too, when we, we talked about this about going to national parks and historical sites, museums are really good places too because you guys can go and visit there. Um, they can learn a lot of history. Like one of the places you want to go is uh, Pigeon Forge up in Tennessee and that's because I'm, I'm fascinated with the Titanic. They have a Titanic scene up there. Some of the artifacts that they pulled up from Titanic are up there. Um, I definitely want to go hit that up one day and actually check it out. Um, but I'm pretty much into any any big ship. I like naval ships. Um, being down here, we want to go hit up the uh, the USS Alabama um, over in Mobile. We want to go hit that up and check that out. Um, and then also go so check out some other um, other areas that have different things that we can show the kids and that we can explore. You know. Last year we did the whole Blue Angels things with my family and that was really cool because then we got to actually go on base, check out the jets, check out some other planes and everything and I think that's a really cool opportunity for kids to be able to go see that kind of stuff. And then also for shows like that to show kids the different opportunities you have as they get older to really focus on what they want to do as a career. So schooling is definitely a big thing and make sure you guys are focused on on that as an aspect as far as the road to RV and with kids and pets so um, and I think a big thing too is you really want to have some sort of nurturing bond when you have family time you know as we you know as we we started doing stuff um, 
and I started getting involved with my wife's kids as, as when we first started med, med and started dating and stuff. We um, did a lot of watching of movies. Um, now, that's a good and bad thing um, because we stay cooped up, but a good thing because that's something I enjoy, that's something they enjoy, so we kind of bonded with that. As they got a little bit older, we started looking into doing more things, and we wanted to get out more and go do different things. So that's why when like we did the South Dakota trip, we went and explored there, uh, went through the, the Black Hills Mountains, and it was all sorts of really great places to go. And I think it's a great thing to go hiking and go fishing and um, canoeing and boating and off-road trails. That's you know We did that whole thing last year with, with, with Logan, and um, it was supposed to be a thing with all of our kids uh, but we got really busy last year with some changes uh, work related and then that led to this and it's kind of a snowball effect so I still owe two kids a, a trip to go out one-on-one -on -one where we either go overlanding or go do something and I'm, I'm gonna be planning that to try to get that taken care of so that we they can go enjoy the same thing that Logan got to experience when we went to the E3 overland with trail recon that's for me when I started making the changes back in COVID when we started doing that you guys if you haven't checked that out check it out in the video we have all sorts of great videos of the content that we released when we started rebuilding two Jeeps basically what we did was we rapture lined them uh, repaired some paint or I'm sorry repaired some panels by welding in some new metal some new floorboards uh, one of them was already lifted up we lifted the other one up put new wheels tires and everything all on them we, we, we dressed them up to basically go off-roading uh, we built them out great. They worked great. We loved them. Um, and then we made some changes. We started looking into more overlanding. We, we wanted to go camping more. And that's where we started doing more builds where we started interacting and, and building it out where we could do like a rooftop 10. Total fail. Tried it. Tried to do my homemade stuff. Did not work. I would not recommend it, by the way. Just go spend the extra money. You Rooftop tents now, you can get them fairly cheap now. And they're starting to pop up everywhere the overlanding phase is kind of faded out but we still love it because it's car camping you get to go pretty much remote locations wherever you want to go and that's one of the things that I enjoy doing with my kids is going out overlanding but one of the things that that you have to think about too is maintaining that that activity with them when you when you when you get into the RV life it's very easy to get wrapped up with doing projects with the RV um, staying busy with work doing all sorts of different things that you kind of just forget about the family time and just you need to focus on that a lot I think family time and, and kind of finding a work 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 family schedule works out really good um, so make sure you guys do that also create different traditional nights that you want to do you know we're, we're living full-time in an RV it's very easy to start a game do different things you can you can get out a card game do uno for a night or you can do bingo or you can do all sorts of different family games and do a family game night um you can do creating cool meals one of the things that we've changed doing the rv lifestyle with this is i'm cooking more outside you know i've had the blackstone i've loved cooking outside but we never really did it at the house because it was kind of the the hustle and bustle and then by the time i got home it was didn't really feel like doing it just overwhelmed with other stuff I had to get done and I'm trying to reboot myself on that so that's one of the things I'm doing now is we're going and doing meals outside I'll smoke food I'll, I'll cook it on the Blackstone we do all sorts of really cool so one, one of the other things you can do with family bonding is you know I think it's really cool to connect with other families when you get into this lifestyle you're gonna be traveling a lot and you're gonna be meeting a lot of new people um, don't be scared to go in and introduce yourself. Talk to them. Um, I'm not saying just cut through their cut through cut through their area. Just kind of just jump in their 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 zone and their their bubble. Um, but you definitely want to introduce yourself. Put yourself out there. Talk to more people because they're in the same boat as you. When I first started doing this, I was always skeptical about going up and talking to people because I didn't know if they would actually want to, and I, I didn't know how they would receive that. So. Now that I know and I've, I've talked to some people and the guy next to us, he, he, he works full time over the base locally, comes home, we talk to him all the time, great guy. Talking to more people that do this lifestyle, I think it's a great thing. And when you start interacting with other families, you're going to build different bonds. And as you start traveling, you will have connections where you actually stick with some of these people. Um, 
we have friends that are still back up in Illinois, um, so we still do talk to some of them. And you know, I think that's the same way. When you when you make a change in your life, just because you make a change doesn't mean your friends go away. They're always going to still be there. So, yeah, just I think I think the biggest thing is communication for emphasizing to your kids to meet new friends, meet new people, and embrace the lifestyle. I think that's the biggest thing I can tell everybody that when they want to get into this lifestyle and and the art of going into a full-time RV limit and, and balancing work and, and education and kids and everything else is going to be communication. You guys really want to communicate. You guys really want to work with um, the different needs and wants as far as what everybody wants and the different needs that everybody's going to need when they start living in a small confined area. Communication will be a big thing. You know, one of the things that we set up was we, we kept hearing the kids. They wanted their own space and we wanted to set it up that way. We had that in that goal in mind. We didn't do it right out of the starting gates, but now that we have the beds partially finished, we're waiting for some some extra stuff so that we can finish it up. They have mattresses now. They have their own little space. Um, we've seen a, a, a drastic decrease on some of the stress levels as far as people um, not having a place to sleep or just sleeping in, on the couch or or battling some of that stuff that they just weren't un they were unsure of and it wasn't certain of. So that's a huge thing communication um so really conclusion to all this is you know full-time RVing with lit with kids is just careful planning and dedication you know when you get into a unique lifestyle like this you just have to balance work and life um, selecting the right RV is going to be a, cre a key critical thing for you if you don't select the right RV and you don't select the 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 right one and you feel like it's not the right one for you make a change sell it upgrade it whatever you need to do to get the right one um, and before you do that take the RV out you don't have to go buy an RV right away you can rent RVs you can go out and you can do different things with it before you purchase it try out a couple different ones you can rent sprinter vans and go out and try those. You can rent um, Class C's. You can rent Class A's. You can rent pretty much any type type of RV and go out and just try it out. Um, if you're not sure, go to dealerships. Go touch it. Go feel it. Go interact with it. Um, let the salesman sell you on it and see if it works for you. And some of that stuff you'll be able to tell right away if it's going to work for you. You're going to have that gut feeling and you really just need to kind of stick with it. So. Um, you need to make sure you guys embrace a lot of stuff. Embrace the lifestyle is the biggest, the biggest thing I can tell you guys is you really need to embrace the lifestyle. If you don't, you will fail at this lifestyle. It will be miserable for you. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of moving parts to this that you just have to kind of think about. You know, schooling for the education for the kids. How is that going to work? Um, as far as uh, different opportunities the kids are going to have when they when they go to school and different events. How's that going to work for your nine to five as far as getting back and doing different things? Um, what are you guys going to do for your extracurricular when you guys go out? You know that's just all kind of just recapping exactly what we just talked about. And then what about friends for them? You know when we, when you RV with kids, you want to make sure that they have some sort of social life. You don't want them being cooped up. You don't want them being just kind of isolated in your own little area and bubble. Uh, which is good, trust me. I like off-grid camping because you're you're isolated. Nobody's out there. You get to enjoy the peace and quiet all to yourself. But you definitely want to really think about the social aspect of your kids. So, and then to top it off, what about your pets? You know, we have two huskies. You know, we have to think about that with with in the summertime down here in Alabama and Florida. Uh, we work in Florida, but we live here in Alabama. What's going to happen with? the heat you know if you is your rig capable of doing that do you have remote monitoring we do and that's one of the things we're gonna be talking about the channel we're, we're making a smart home rig set up so that we can monitor our temperatures we already have a setup so we can monitor temperatures we have some boards coming in for the for the AC units on the top that we're gonna convert over to some smart thermostats for RVs for the, these Dometics that we have and we're gonna be able to turn on and off the air conditioners um, we're going to be able to do some mo uh, battery power monitoring. We're going to be able to check the batteries. We're going to be able to check all the power usage, everything once we get done with the system. And it's going to be sweet when we get done with it. 
and I got all sorts of videos we're gonna be making about all the different processes that we're doing like the, the Starlink 12 volt system that we're doing because that's a key, key critical thing when you start getting into RVs whether you're traveling or not there's no art there's no internet out here we have the campground internet but if you guys watch my last video you guys really don't want to be using the campground internet for me I'm an IT guy that's an open security network all sorts of people are sharing it you don't know who's on that network you don't know what they're doing and you don't know what you're they, they can get access of yours so that's a huge thing for you um, I don't allow I, I try not to allow my kids to use it but they still use it just because they want data so you just kind of kind of take that into mindful I don't use it my wife doesn't use it our RV does not use it uh, we don't pair to it at all um, we have two different internet providers. We have the Starlink that we're converting to 12 volts to work strictly on our 12 volt system for boondocking and off grid park uh, um, RV. And once we get to that point, as well as we have an AT&T SIM card up here as well, and that's another data plan. But the AT&T is not going to work everywhere, as well as the Starlink's not going to work everywhere. So we, what do you what do you do in that point? Um, that's another third option I'm going to have to try to figure out and take a look at. But as we go down this path and we start working down that, I'm going to find a solution for that I'm an IT guy I'm a problem solver I like doing that kind of stuff so I, th I think it's a really great opportunity for a lot of people to to think about the different things that you can do and with with having dogs that opens up a whole nother category because it's not just like kids kids can get out of the RV and do that dogs cannot so or cats even um, any type of animal that doesn't have the capability of leaving your RV so Remote monitoring is a huge thing for us to be able to do when we're when we're not here. Because once the, once the kids start school again, where they're not going to be here during the day, um, the dogs will be here all by themselves. So we need to be able to check on that. We have cameras inside that we can we can remote monitor and check. Uh, we have the uh, Arlo doorbell that we're installing, as well as the um, keypad and some outdoor Voyager cameras that are tied into our mobile DVR system, so it actually records. And that talks about a whole nother scenario as far as the different technologies you can build into there so you can monitor your rig. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's a great opportunity. One of the things that we've noticed with our dogs since we've been here is they actually, when, when we take them out more, they're more content with being in the yard and not interacting with them much because we get home, we let them out. Pretty much you get stuck in a funk and you just cook dinner, veg out in front of the TV and then from there um, the kids actually walk the dogs we actually take them out they spend time out here Zeus our oldest husky he's he's very tame now he's not pulling at people anymore he's walking around on his own um, we've seen a whole 180 on them as far as how much happier they are being outside being able to interact with people and spend time with the outdoors and just with the kids you know I think this is a good opportunity because then that goes right back to the same thing create more time with your family pets are family so you got to stick to that too um, and then most of all have fun just create lots of great memories and get out there and have some fun so this is a, another good episode I think of how we adapted to the full-time RV living um, we are calling this episode the art of full-time RVing balancing work and life, work and family life and full-time RVing and I'm hoping you guys like the episode that we created with this this will be on our podcast as well as our YouTube channel we'll leave some information down below if you guys are listening to this on the podcast as well as the YouTube channel if you guys have not subscribed to either one of these make sure you guys do that that definitely does help the channel a lot and make sure you guys comment down below what do you guys think of the con uh, content um, I know some of the stuff you guys have probably heard before, but we have been told multiple times they want to hear from other people that do this stuff every single day. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to give you guys as much information as we can. We're going to broadcast it out. And yeah, comment down below. We want to hear from you guys. And make sure you guys share the content. Because when you guys share the content, it helps us get out there, it helps the SEO, and it helps us hack YouTube because that's the, ultimately the goal is to get YouTube hacked so that our stuff comes up and you guys see more of it. So we'll see you guys on the next episode. I'm Kenny with JK Broncos. Peace.